Hello, and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this image. Photographing glass can be notoriously difficult, especially uh, if you have um, highlights and you want to show the highlights up. Um, so this video is really all about how you light the subject uh, to give you the result that you want. OK, so let's just go through what I have uh, already. Uh, I've just put up a table here, uh, and on that table uh, I've put uh, the subject, which is going to be our bottle, and the glass. Uh, then I have uh, my camera with a 24 to 70 uh, zoom lens on it. Uh, and the camera is, as usual, tethered uh, into Capture One software, so you can see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Right, so to get started then, um, first thing to do is to actually compose the image. Now in order to do that, and so that you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to use Live View um, through Capture One. Uh, so I'll just set that up. Just need to make a few changes here. Um, so instead of using the usual 100 ISO, uh, just for Live View, I'm going to increase that to uh, 1600. I'm also going to take the shutter speed uh, down to maybe a fifteenth, something like that. I want to leave the aperture more or less where it is um, so that I can get uh, a good representation of uh, uh, what it will actually look like. So we'll click the Live View button. Uh, and there we go. So that is the image uh, being produced by the camera at the moment. So if I were to, for instance, um, Zoom that in a little. There we go. You should be able to see that that's uh, zooming in uh, on the top part of the bottle. Uh, we could just focus that up a little. Just get that somewhere close, like that. OK, so that's the starting point for um, the composition. But it's not really very good. Uh, so what I actually want to do uh, is just place the glass slightly behind the bottle and probably elevate it a little, um, so that we form a bit of a Hogarth line uh, down here and then back up the other side of the bottle. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do uh, is just put uh, a block underneath the glass just to raise it up. So here we have just a block of wood. And I have a, an offcut of uh, cloth as well, uh, because we don't want any stray reflections. There we go. So if I just set that up something like that, we have a look at what that looks like. We're sort of getting there. It's not quite there yet. I just need to move that in a little. Like so that's very close. Might move the bottle this time, just move the bottle forward a bit. There, and you should be able to see um, what I'm actually going for is this outer line of the glass and this side of the bottle. You can also see from this all the various reflections that we're getting from the house lights in the studio here. Uh, taking pictures of glass like this can be a bit of a nightmare. Um, you don't have to live in a black box to do it, but it does help. Um, obviously the, uh, the focus needs a bit of adjustment because the glass is out of focus, the bottle is in focus. Um, I can do that from here, wind that backwards a bit. That's possibly a bit too much. Yes, it's somewhere around there. I want to be able to do both of these in one shot. I don't want to have to uh, stack the images. So it might be an idea just to um, if I quickly pop over here. If we increase the aperture to maybe um, f16, uh, now because I've done that I'm going to increase the ISO uh, to 3200. There we go. And now just refocus that a bit. There. 
So as for composition, I think that's about as far as we can go. So I will shut down the live view uh, and now just reset all these points. So I'll go back to 100 ISO, uh, come back up to uh, 250th of a second. And with that still at F16, uh, but without any flash, uh, what I'm going to do is just do a test just to see how much um, ambient light is affecting the shot. There we go. And you can see from that there's virtually nothing, which is good. That's exactly what we want. OK, uh, so at this point, it's uh, a good point to actually start introducing some lighting. OK, so I'm going to start by just using a uh, studio flash. This is a Profoto D2. This is a 1,000 joules. Uh, at full energy. Um, I'm going to start off just using uh, energy level 5, which is half range, really. Um, and you could see from the uh, starting image that I showed at the beginning of the video uh, that this is predominantly lit from one side. Uh, so basically, I'm going to use this uh, to cause a highlight which will run down the side of the glass and the side of the bottle. So we'll just turn that on. There we go. Put a flash trigger on the top of the camera. And I'll just do a test exposure. OK, so on this you can see that it's generally uh, a little underexposed. Um, so I'm just going to increase the energy uh, on the flash. Um, I'm going to take it up maybe two stops to start with, like that, and we'll just do another test. There we are, that's got uh, a bit more going for it. OK, now you can see from this that there's quite a bit wrong um, with the way that this is, uh, this is lit. Um, this highlight is in completely the wrong place, and it's a bit wide for what I want. So, in order to uh, address that, uh, what we need to do is actually look at the, uh, the physics of where this is. Now, with the light almost directly opposite the bottle and the glass, uh, it's going to give uh, a relatively wide um, highlight. So if we move this just back a bit and pop it up a bit, like so, now that should have the effect of moving the highlight round the side of the, uh, the glass and the bottle, and also um, increasing it so it's right at the very top of uh, the, uh, the two items here. So let's just give that uh, a bit of a, a test and see what that looks like. So you can see uh, the difference that has caused. That's the original one, and that's what we have now, uh, especially in the bottle here. Uh, you can see that it is um, almost in the right place. Not quite yet, but getting there. It's running almost down the side of the bottle. Uh, and it goes all the way from the top right down to somewhere near, uh, near the label at the bottom. If we compare that to where it was before, it was much wider and a bit further round. Now, also on the glass, you can see that uh, the primary uh, with these uh, type of uh, subjects, you'll get a primary reflection on one side of the glass and a secondary reflection on the other, which is literally the reflection of the first highlight. Uh, and then you get um, other ones inside as well. So what we need to do is move it round a bit more uh, so that it's uh, going further round the side of the glass. So we'll just move this bit further round. I'm keeping it um, perpendicular uh, on purpose. The further you move it round from the subject's point of view, the narrower this is becoming. Let me show you. So this has now moved round the side of the glass, and this is right on the edge of the bottle. If we go to where we were before, and now where we are. Um, other things that I might want to do is the reflection stops at this point, uh, which is because 
this glass is actually uh, bending away from the light. So in order to, um, to make this bit uh, have a highlight in it, you need a light about here. Now obviously this is a solid uh, tabletop, um, so you can't put a light there, but you can put a mirror there. So let's just do that. So this is just a normal mirror. I'm just going to pop this just in here and we'll take another image. There you go. And you should be able to see from that 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 has had added this highlight all the way down the stem of the glass. We go to the previous image, no highlight, and there's the highlight. So just doing that with a mirror uh, makes a huge difference uh, to the, uh, the whole look of the, uh, of the image. Right. So it's probably about time to, uh, to put something uh, in the glass to give a bit of interest uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the picture. I'm just going to use uh, some ginger ale uh, because it has a certain amount of colour to it uh, and it is uh, carbonated, so we'll get some bubbles from it. So we'll just take a picture like that and see what that's uh, turning out like. There we go. And we'll just wait for the, uh, uh, the, the bubbles to die down a bit uh, and just take a, uh, another image. There we are. This will give us a bit of a choice when we come to um, manipulate the, uh, the final image in, in Photoshop. So that has fewer bubbles than the previous one. OK, so just before we uh, finish with uh, taking the pictures and uh, move into uh, to Photoshop, uh, I'm just going to uh, liven up the, uh, the liquid in the glass a bit uh, to give me uh, a few options when we come to uh, compose the image properly. Now this is just a, a little trick uh, which you can use uh, just to um, create bubbles. Uh, this will work for any carbonated, uh, carbonated liquid. Uh, and what I have in here is sugar. So I'm just going to drop this sugar in the glass and then take a series of images. There we go. Uh, and that will just give us a choice of uh, just how many bubbles uh, we have in the final image. OK. So all that remains now is to uh, export the, uh, the pictures that I want into Photoshop, uh, and I'll show you how I glue them all together. OK, so here we are in Photoshop. And I can just review the images that we've selected. Uh, so this is the base image. Uh, with no liquid in the glass. Uh, then we put the liquid in the glass and then I have two variants of uh, the bubbles. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, is uh, make a stack of all those images uh, so that I can then manipulate them. So I'll load files into stack, uh, add open files and just click on uh, OK. There we go. So just to make this uh, a little simpler, uh, I might reorder them, actually, and just put this one, the empty one, uh, at the very bottom. Uh, then I'll have uh, that, and then at finally I'll have the two uh, bubbles. So I can turn the bubbles off and go back to the empty glass. Uh, now you might find that these are actually ever so slightly out of register. Uh, so in order to register them all up, I'll just um, click on the uh, visibility of this one. Uh, I'll drop the opacity. Uh, and we can just um, fine tune the position. Now I'll do that to each layer. OK, so there they all are, um, all lined up. Uh, so I can just go through these now. Uh, 
you should be able to notice that when I add the liquid into the glass, it absolutely uh, obscures part of the highlight on the bottle, which we don't want. So what we can do is just add a mask to this layer, like so, and then by uh, painting some parts of that out, I'll just increase the hardness on that edge, there we go. We can just bring that bottle edge back in again. Now obviously I've gone a bit too far in places here, uh, so because it's a mask, just swap it back out again, like so. There. Uh, and now I think I'll just have a look at the different bubbles. Uh, that one looks quite nice. So I'll just add a mask to that, but this time I'm going to add an inverse mask. So it's mostly hidden. So I hold down the Alt key, add a mask, uh, and it hides most of it whilst we uh, uh, go along. So anything that I paint in white will now add the bubbles. So I can add the bubbles in the glass. And again, I'm doing this relatively quickly. You might want to take a bit more care. There we go. Now, there's a couple of mistakes that I made just down this side. So again, because it's a mask, it's dead easy to change. I'm just going to harden up this brush and just put that highlight back in. Uh, and I might just get rid of the sugar at the bottom here. So this time I'll make it very soft and maybe a bit bigger. And we'll just delete those bits off the bottom. Like so. Uh, and also, just at the top here, there's uh, a, a little condensation on the inside of the glass from all the bubbles. Um, so, if I go back to this layer, which is where I think those are coming from, uh, well, first of all, I'll turn off that one. Oh, yes, they are just coming from there. So, I just need to get rid of those. So, just painting onto the mask. Make sure you have the mask selected. And I'll just get rid of that bit on the very top of the glass make the top of the glass clean again. So then, adding my bubbles, I end up with clean bubbles. OK, uh, this area just at the very top isn't quite right, so that just needs a bit of adjustment just on that mask. So I'll just go back, harden it up. And I'll just take that bit off. OK, so with all that done, um, the next thing is I'll just want to tidy up this reflection uh, on the inside of the glass here and just get rid of this bit. Uh, so I'm going to do all that on a stamp layer. So I'll just click off those completely, uh, hold down the Shift, Control, Alt and press the E key uh, and that will make me a stamp layer uh, which takes into account everything which is visible below it. Uh, and then on this one, um, I'll just literally paint those things out. So I'm just going to use uh, black uh, with a brush. I'll make that brush a little bit bigger and quite a lot hard, uh, softer. And we'll just paint those bits out. Like so. Excellent. Uh, so it uh, just remains to um, Pick a nice crop. That image, something like that. And there we go. So there we have it. Uh, that is how I produced that particular shot. Now, if you like seeing these sort of things, just click on the other images as they appear uh, and don't forget to subscribe. 
Oh, and also, if you want notifications of when these videos are available, just hit the bell as well. Thank you very much. See you in the next one.